little man. Now, I'm talking on purpose so he can hear me. I don't want him to suddenly get a fright. So you can see his ears are open. I'm watching his body language. Can't smell. He doesn't smell like he's in must and the, the wind is coming to us. But so especially with single elephant bulls, it's very important, I find, in a lot of cases, to actually let animals know you're here. So sneaking up on them, if the wind's in your favor and stuff, it's great. Now, the wind is in our favor, but of course, we're, we're sedimentary here. We can't run around and move out of his way. So I'd much rather him know that I'm here. I'm talking in a nice, even tone, and you can see he's completely relaxed with us. And what is that, 40 meters, Brian? Yeah. So hello, big boy. Now, I just want him to know that we're here. Now, what might happen is once he's finished feeding there, he might still be a bit more curious. So he might actually come up to, to investigate me a bit further. And uh, the most important thing is, of course, here yeah, we can't run away. We can't go anywhere. So it would be to stand my ground. He might lift his ears at us, but don't worry. I'm good at dealing with teenagers. Well, he's probably about 20. Hey, mister. But at the moment, he's completely aware we're here. I'm not standing out, I'm standing right in the open. I'm not trying to hide. I want him to know we're here. I don't want him to get a fright or a surprise at close range. And as you can see, he's decided that it's all very chilled and he's gonna keep on eating. Now, it has to be one of my favorite things in the world is elephants on foot and particular elephant bulls. You can get a lot closer to them, they're a lot more relaxed, and they're a lot less aggressive than, than elephant cows. Of course, they don't have babies and whatnot to, to defend. Hey, mister. Now, this looks like it could be the same elephant Jamie started out with at the beginning of the safari, that single young bull. And this morning, they said an elephant was coming. It never got here, but this one just arrived out of nowhere. So again, we're looking very carefully at his behavior. <laughs> so <laughs> Diana says maybe he smells the rulers in the tent. Well, Diana, there's a lot more marulas out there that he'll be able to smell. Look, now he's coming right out into the open. Hey, you. Now, he might lift his head and shake his head at us. But again, if this was a breeding herd or even a single cow, uh, I would have really moved, moved Brian and myself back into the tent uh, and... Uh, would have maybe shouted just to let her know she's let her know that I'm, I'm I'm serious. But with an elephant bull, I mean, look at this. He's now even closer, 30 meters. Oh, they're so special. So as I was saying, we're looking at his body language now, and I know some of you don't believe that you can. Yes, Brian's just going to clean. There's a little bit of rain around. Um, a lot of you, some of you, don't believe that. Uh, you can talk an elephant down or shout an elephant down. Now, what you're dealing with is behavior that they're not used to. So an elephant's used to being the biggest, baddest thing in the bush. So if anything runs, if it runs at anything, it's used to it running away. So by immediately standing your ground, um, you sh displaying different behavior, something that that animal is not used to. And if it's not used to it, it generally will back out. It's not sure. Now, for example, I've seen elephants run away from Steenbok. Uh, it was a, a rabid Stenbok, so they might have been able to pick up on the rabies, but the fact that Stenbok was trying to chase and bite a, a seven-ton elephant bull, he got out of there. I, I think it's a bit of both. I think that different behavior was immediately picked up. Oh, look, it looks like he's coming closer. So again, I'm watching his body language. I'm just going to make sure I'm between Brian and the elephant. Hello, mister. No. See, he's lifting his head a little bit. He's letting us know he's here. He's letting us know he's big. He's think ah, 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 no, don't be naughty. There we go. So now he looked like he might give us a little bit, ah, ah, stop it. Yes, I don't want to fight with you, but you're more than welcome to feed next to us. Yes, now you look sheepish. Go feed on the tree. So now immediately his tail sticks out a little bit, but there we go. A lot of you are wondering how to deal with an elephant. There we go, <laughs> very, very easily done. Now, of course, every situation is different and please 
do not try this unless you have lots of experience. Now, my first elephant encounter on foot uh, was my first memory at two years. Obviously, I didn't know what I was doing, and I got a hiding from my father afterwards. But since then, I've spent thousands of hours with elephants on foot uh, all over Africa in rainforests, in, watch your feet, Ryan, yeah. in rainforests and savannas and semi-deserts and rivers, on boats, on foot, on cars. So, here we go. He, I just want him to relax a bit. I think he will come back. He's just now fed there. We just didn't want him to get a little bit cheeky. So, in a lot of cases, and I'm, I'm uh, <laughs> could get myself in trouble here. So, it's very easy to have a very exciting elephant encounter on foot. So I could have let that situation go till within he was in five meters of me before I clapped. And the amount of danger and everything would have been exactly the same. But of course, um, it's when you take those silly chances and you lose the respect for those animals that bad things happen. So in this circumstance, I'd rather 15, 20 meters, great. But when he's, and if he'd walked in feeding, I wouldn't have done anything. But the fact he was like, okay, I'm big, I'm tough. Stop it before it becomes a potentially dangerous situation is the trick. Now, as of course, on bushwalk, we probably would have moved out of that situation before we had to do that. But because we're in the tent, he was always going to come here. He was always curious from the sound. So we, we, I'd rather face him when I'm outside and, and have some space and stuff, and he has some space to deal with, uh, rather than trying to chase him from inside a tent uh, where I've got blocked sights and whatnot. Let's just have a quick look. Now, he has stopped right here. We just can't see him. So he's stopped. He's still about 30 meters. You can just see the trees moving where he's feeding. You can see his tail, there we go. So he's no further than he was. You see him? Just see his tail there. Now he still might come closer to him, but we've, we've both now established what, well, he, we've established between him and I what my personal distance is. And he probably isn't gonna come within that close sort of 15, 20 meter range again, and he'll stay around our peripheries. But wasn't that exciting? But let's go back to Tristan and those wet and sopping and totally miserable looking Tristan and in Goulmers.